Hello everyone, and welcome back. So last time I told you that this this diffusion coefficient, diffusion coefficient d, that's where we take into account all the you know the bond strength between the various different atoms that are holding it back, the temperature of my sample here, how hot is it? The hotter it is, the easier for that vacancy formation, and it puts all that together, and that's what goes into our flux equation. Because before, it was just saying, okay, we have a concentration gradient. That's where we're going to get the flux from. This is taking into account everything else. Now, obviously, as we change our temperature, it's going to be different. So how do we use this equation? Well, we know we're going to have some pre-exponential constant. We've got to figure out what that is. We have this activation energy. We need to know what that is. And we're going to have to solve for both. Now, this is not something that you're going to have to do in this class except when I give you data. You have to do this experimentally. For any particular material, you're gonna to have to figure out the diffusion coefficient experimentally. And so what you'll do is you'll actually calculate the diffusion coefficient as a function of temperature. So you'll have a, you'll calculate the flux, that particular temperature, you'll from that flux determine the coefficient because the number of flux was simply equal to this times my concentration gradient. So if I know what my concentration gradient is, I keep that constant, and as temperature changes, well, that's going to be proportional to the flux changing and the diffusion coefficient will be proportional to that. So we have this equation. We see that it's going to keep on exponentially increasing. But with a little bit of manipulation, we move it around. We take a natural log plot and we plot it versus inverse temperature. Suddenly, we have a nice linear trend, which is fantastic. And that linear trend is important. Because what we'll have then is more or less this is where it intersects the axis, and this right here is my variable. And so I can kind of rewrite this. Well, L and a D, that's kind of like Y. This right here, that's my intercept, that's B. Um, 1 over T is X, and so what I have is Y equals negative Q d over r times x plus b. And this is the equation of a straight line, with this being my slope. Okay, so if I can figure out the slope of this line, I can figure out my activation energy. Now, as we know, it's going to be temperature dependent. It also is going to depend on what two things are being combined here. Like, is it carbon and iron, or what kind of iron? Is it iron and iron? Is it aluminum and aluminum? Is it iron and different types of iron? Um, there's all kinds of different combinations here. And depending on what combination it is, it's going to depend on how it is affected by temperature. Now, if you look up here, these are much, much higher rates. Okay, that's much, much higher diffusion coefficients. And what is that um, connected to? Well, those are interstitial diffusion coefficients. The ones down here, the much, much lower ones, are the substitutional coefficients. As you can see, they're much, much smaller. And that's because these are all based on vacancies, while this one can go where it wants. Interstitials can kind of fit through the gaps. They need the change in temperature because it makes the gaps bigger. But the gaps are already there. It just makes it easier on them as the temperature increases. And here is a nice little picture of this in a program, just showing how the confusion quotient, or the diffusion coefficient of magnesium and aluminum looks from a little bit more scientific data. Now, one thing you're going to need for some of the problems we're going to be solving is a way of figuring out the diffusion coefficient using two different to, um, two different temperatures. So. We might know what the diffusion is, like the diffusion coefficient is. We don't know what this pre-exponential constant is. We don't know what our activation energy is. So we know diffusion, we know temperature, and we know it at two points. Well, if we do a long plot, we realize that you know those two points should be enough to make a line. This is y. That's x. So we have two points. That's enough to make the slope, rise of a run. So if I add both these equations together, what I get is log of one minus log of the other is going to be equal to 
negative QD over R times the change in inverse temperature. And if I take the exponential of both sides, I can then get this equation that says, okay, well, my diffusion coefficient at point two is equal to my diffusion coefficient at point one times the change in exponential or change in inverse temperature. Whoop, a little bit too far. So this is extremely helpful. It can also help me if I need to calculate this activation energy if I need. And once I know that, I can calculate a lot of other things. So this equation is going to come back in several different forms, sometimes for this pre-exponential constant, sometimes just to find the second diffusion rate, sometimes to find the activation energy. So make sure you don't forget this. Make sure you're writing it down right now. Okay? So thank you for listening, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.